How many minutes till the end of intermission? Is that how the show should open? Should there even be a show? No. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the show tunes that playfully send up the genre or the musical in which they feature. Who on earth is going to sit there while an actor breaks into song? Number 10, untitled opening number, title of show. Forget meta songs, this whole musical's meta. Created by Jeff Bowen and Hunter Bell, title of show follows two friends, Jeff and Hunter, as they try coming up with a show to present at the New York Musical Theater Festival. Guess where that idea came from? Well, I'm trying to write a musical about two guys writing a musical about two guys writing a musical. Woo! Naturally, a song about creating a musical is brimming with songs about, well, writing an original musical. The show kicks off with a song that introduces the musical's premise, setting the stage for its self-referential nature. And a little louder to further emphasize the point, and then we'll cross down stage toward you. Throughout the number, we get a feel of how these projects get off the ground, from workshopping musical notes and dynamics to finding actor friends who will work for free. Don't worry, the secondary characters get their chance to shine too. It was their idea to bring us along and now we're hijacking this page of the script. We're equipped. Number 9. Comedy Tonight. A funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Stephen Sondheim works his magic by turning the Greek chorus into a barrel of laughs, giving the classics a makeover that even ancient playwrights would envy. Take, for instance, the uproarious opening number Comedy Tonight. Old situations, new complications, nothing portentous or polite. Tragedy tomorrow, comedy tonight. In it, Pseudolus, a Roman servant, breaks the fourth wall to fill audiences in on the wild ride ahead. It's filled with practically every comedic cliché in the book, and that really only serves to amplify its self-reflexivity. Pantaloons and tunics, partisans and eunuchs, funerals and chases, baritones and basses, panderers, philanderers. Likewise in Sondheim's The Frogs, the actors begin by setting the stage for a night of comedy. However, first there are some ground rules to go over with the audience. And we'd appreciate your turning off your mobiles while we wait. <laughs> Number 8. For now, Avenue Q. Nothing lasts. Life goes on. Full of surprises. As the show ends, Princeton's friends assure him it's okay not to have all the answers because everything in life is just for now anyway. What starts as a song intended to uplift the puppet soon turns its attention to the audience. Discomfort only for now, with friendship only for now. When Avenue Q premiered in 2003, the cast reassured viewers that then-President George Bush was only for now. Well, they weren't wrong. Since then, they've been tweaking that line to match whatever the current political and social climate reflects, even switching it up based on where the musicals performed. Over the years, audiences have reported hearing everything from Justin Bieber to Prop 8 to Fox News filling that slot. Your hair is only for now. Number 7. Brush up your Shakespeare, Kiss Me Kate. In Act 2 of this musical, a pair of gangsters unexpectedly find themselves in the spotlight with no choice but to think on their feet. So they sing advice on how to woo women by referencing Shakespeare's works, staying in tune with the play within a play. If her virtue was fair, she defends well. Just remind her that all's well that ends well. And if still she won't give you a bonus. You know what Venus got from Adonis? Woo! They use some of the Bard's most notable works to create hilarious innuendos. It's almost like they're directly interacting with the audience and inviting them to participate in the joke. With the wife of the British ambassador, try a crack out of Troilus and Cressida. We would have loved to have been a fly on the wall when Cole Porter penned these witty lyrics because they're brilliant. Also, who doesn't love a song within a musical that acknowledges its own existence as a song? You know what we mean. Forsooth and the law, cow, cow. If they and the law, cow, cow. Number six, prologue, invisible, Beetlejuice. Is it being greedy to need somebody to see me and say? 
Beetlejuice begins on a rather somber note, with the characters gathered for the funeral of Emily Dietz, our protagonist Lydia's mother. While Lydia laments the loneliness that accompanies grief, the titular Beetlejuice chimes in, noting that most musicals don't typically start with such a solemn number. And such a bold departure from the original source material! He's got a point. How often do you see a musical open with a ballad about bereavement? Also, this scene is totally different from how Tim Burton kicked off his quirky 1988 flick. Then again, this tune would probably stick out like a clown at a goth convention there, too. Anyway, Beetlejuice's abrupt tone shift brings plenty of humor as he segues into the whole being dead thing. So take a little break here, it's kinda like a wake here. The scenery is fake here, but there's a giant snake here! Number 5. Act 1 Finale – Urine Town Urine Town is a funny and thought-provoking musical set in a world where a water shortage has led to a ban on private restrooms. The show explores themes of capitalism, corruption, equality, and environmental conservation, also featuring songs that parody some of our other favorite shows. We're suffering now such lives of sorrow, don't give us tomorrow, just give us today. In this Les Mis-like number, our peeved protagonist Bobby leads a rebellion against the greedy CEO, Caldwell B. Cladwell. This is a man whose grip on law enforcement is tighter than a clenched… well, we'll let you finish that sentence. You can punish our bodies, Mr. Cladwell, but you can never punish our spirit! Punish our bodies! I never bring any punishment on my body! The number also includes clever nods to real-world political and social problems. As it concludes, Officer Lockstock, who doubles as the show's narrator, hilariously wraps things up before wishing the audience a happy intermission. So we don't get to catch them. Not yet! Enjoy intermission and see you shortly! Number 4. Intermission Song – A Strange Loop Ironically, Intermission Song in a Strange Loop doesn't happen during intermission because there isn't one. Instead, it appears at the top of the show. Usher, an usher at The Lion King on Broadway, ponders the show he's creating about his own experiences during that show's break. You can't just flout every convention, then commands complete attention in a big black and queer ass American Broadway show. Oh, His personified inner thoughts converse with him in a way that reminds us of Bobby's friends and company. As you might imagine, a musical about an usher named Usher is in short on meta songs. I pass her on a smile, pretend I have no brain, make nights with all these tourists hour after hour. Today, which follows the opening number, reveals his yearning for change. Meanwhile, the titular finale number sees him break the fourth wall as we come back full circle. Only this time, Usher is changed by his introspective journey. I should stop overthinking and do the thing that's tough. Unleash my hungry lion. Number 3. A Musical – Something Rotten Who here doesn't love a musical? Okay, maybe one person, but she didn't have Nostradamus to convince her that box steps are the best thing since jazz hands. Let's not forget that Nick Bottom also thought musicals were the stupidest thing he'd ever heard. But then the seer shares his visions of the future of theaters, and things get musical. Oh, what do you talk? What do you talk? It's a musical! A musical? No, a musical! With girls on stage! A musical! Boy. It's a musical theater lover's dream, with enough witty nods and send-ups to light up all of Broadway. You'll want to rewatch this number multiple times just to catch all the references, and believe us, there are plenty. By curtain call, you'll still be laughing and humming the catchy tune as you kickline your way out of the auditorium. Number 2. The Song That Goes Like This – Spam A Lot This musical is an irreverent reimagining of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, which is a comedic skewering of King Arthur's story. But when it comes to parodies, why stop there? This number, sung by Sir Galahad and the Lady of the Lake, offers a tongue-in-cheek spoof of typical Broadway love songs. I'll sing it in your face while we both embrace And then we change the key it pokes fun at the cliches and predictability of these numbers, but in an exaggerated, comedic way. However, the Lady of the Lake isn't content with her limited spotlight and vents her frustration in Diva's lament. Well, they can kiss my tush. It seems to me they've really lost the plot. 
No one play her altos lament? She doesn't need another reason to feel snubbed. We must also say Lahayim to You Won't Succeed on Broadway, a toast to the show's self-awareness. Nobody will go, sir. If it's not kosher, then no show, sir. Even Goyim won't be dim enough to choose. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. All of it. The musical of musicals, the musical. It's all right there in the title. Done. Could they so write a new Probably not. It's all but now been it's done. done. Everybody wants to do a musical, Nick and Nora. Nora hilariously picks apart the best known tropes of the genre and pokes fun at the overarching format of many musicals. Everybody knows that I can act. Acting doesn't get the theaters packed. Stop, Mean Girls. North Shore students don't take regular breaks. Show Off, the drowsy chaperone. She doesn't want to show off, but she's gonna. Please, no more attention. I can't entertain. Climbing uphill, the last five years. Anyone in the biz will relate to Kathy's journey. Stop looking at that, look at me. No, not in my shoes, don't look at my shoes. I hate these stupid shoes. Why did I pick these shoes? Why did I pick this song? Why did I pick this career? Why? Hate me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. I Want to Be a Producer – The Producers The Producers is filled with songs that give a playful nod to musical theater enthusiasts. Ola's When You've Got It, Flaunt It overflows with double entendres and playfully acknowledges the showy nature of the genre. People say that being prim is proper. But every show the laws of prim will stop her. Meanwhile, I Want to Be a Producer is a ribbing of those big shot Broadway types. You know the ones. Choosing Leo Bloom, the jittery accountant, to sing it is essentially Mel Brooks winking at the audience. It's a clever take on the show's satire. It sets my heart afire to see me in this role. Also, did you catch all those references that blur the lines between the musical's fictional story and the actual world of theater? This song's basically an invitation to the audience to join in on the jokes. I'm gonna put on shows that went to run them. Read my name in Winchell's column. I wanna be a producer. What's your favorite self-referential show tune? Let us know in the comments. I guess you don't want to overload them with too much exposition, huh? Everything in its time, little Sally. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.